So now let's look at a few problems to see how to solve these. All right. We have line L is parallel to line M, and line L and line M are cut by transversal T. All right, so it's a little hard to see down here, so I'm going to make this bigger. So it's T, this is line L, and this is line M. Our angles are in order here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The names of them are insignificant other than their placement, but I name them so they're easier to work with. So if we know that the measure of angle 1 is 62 degrees, you are going to do two things. We're going to write 62 degrees right here in where angle 1 is. You're going to put it right on your figure. Because we know L and M are parallel lines, we're going to mark them as parallel with our little arrow symbol, okay? It, remember, the arrows on the end of the line don't mean parallel, okay? These do, so put them on there. Now, because we know our lines are parallel, we have a relationship between all these angles that are formed by those lines and this transversal. So since we're dealing with angle one, we want the measure of all the other angles. Well, angle one is congruent to angle seven by alternate exterior angles. Angle one is also congruent to angle three because they're vertical angles, right? So that vertical angles still play into this, but they're not um, specific angles formed by parallel lines in the transversal, okay? We also know that angle three is an alternate interior angle with angle five, but also angle one is a corresponding angle to angle five, so they're congruent. And I think we've got all our congruent pairs. And of course, five and seven, those angles are um, vertical. Now, angle two, double tick mark, so we don't know that confuse it with angle one, is the same as angle four, so we'll double tick mark that. Angle four corresponds with angle eight, so they're congruent. Angle eight and six are vertical, but also angle two and six are congruent because they're corresponding. So this is how you mark up. Now, because angle one here, where we're focusing, we have information, is 62 degrees, we now can say the measure of angle three equals 62 degrees, the measure of angle 5 equals 62 degrees. The measure of angle 7 equals 62 degrees. How do we get the others? Well, we have a lot of ways to do this. First of all, angle 2 and angle 1 are a linear pair. Linear pairs of angles, by definition, are supplementary, which means they add up to 180. So we're going to use all the knowledge we have about angle relationships now, even prior to being formed by parallel lines and a transversal, to get to our answers. So if this is all 180 degrees, we're going to say 180 minus 62, and that's going to give us 118, I believe. So let's double check, 8, 10, 7, 8, yep, 118. Okay, so the measure of angle 2 equals 118. The measure of angle 4 equals 118 degrees. The measure of angle 6 equals 118 degrees. And the measure of angle 8 equals 118 degrees. And you can write this information right on your figure because it will help you to see it. So you can put 118 and then you can go all the way down. 118, 118, 118. And of course, for angle 1, 3, 5, and 7, you could also write 62, okay, 62, and 62 degrees, okay? So you are going to write on your figure, and then you're going to list all your answers so that they're easily found, and of course, for any kind of a test or quiz, they're easily identified. All right, in this problem, we want to find the measures of the, all the angles um, using the fact that the measure of angle 6 is 2x plus 6, the measure of angle 3 is 3x plus 4. Now, when you look at these angle names, don't assume they're always going to be named the way that you see them all the time. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is 5, 6, 7, 8, all right? 
order of those angle naming conventions is not important, but you have to recognize where the angles are, so don't make assumptions that it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 5, 6, 7, 8 in an order that you want. So angle 6 is 2x plus 6, so I'm going to put that information right here. And angle 3 is 3x plus 4, and I'm going to put that here. What we do know about angle 3 and 6, because these lines are parallel, so I'm going to mark my lines parallel, all right? We were given that information just earlier that we're working with parallel lines cut by transversal T. Angle 3 and angle 6 are congruent, so we can mark them congruent, which gives us a visual that the information about the angles that we wrote on here are equal. So now we can go to work doing the little bit of algebra that we have to do, and we're going to say that 3x plus 4 equals 2x plus 6. These are alternate interior angles, and alternate interior angles are congruent. when we know we have parallel lines cut by a transversal. All right, so we've made our conclusion that these are alternate interior angles, they are congruent, and that is because we know the lines are parallel cut by a transversal. So we're gonna solve, subtract 2x, subtract 4, I'm doing that in one step. So we get x equals 2. So now I need the measures of the angle. So I'll start with what I have, which is angles 3 and, and 6. Now they should come out identical, because they are equal. So I'm going to take 3 times 2 plus 4, and that's going to give me 6 plus 4, so 10. So angle 3 is 10 degrees, okay? So I'm going to put a little 10 degrees here. I'm expecting angle 6 to come out the same way. So I'm going to do 2 times um, 2 plus 6, which is our angle 6, and that's going to be 4 plus 6, which is 10. So yes, they do come out. Our math is correct. This is 10 degrees also. So now when we start to write up our answers, I will accept this. We'll say the measure of angle 3, which equals the measure of angle 6, which now also equals the measure of angle 1, because it's corresponding. Also equals the measure of angle 7, because it corresponds to 3, but is also vertical with 6. These are all the same measure angles, which are 10 degrees. And you can write them on the figures, just with marker it's a little harder and it can, gets very cluttered. So now on the other side of that, if that's 10 degrees, then I'll work with angle 1 and 2. Since we know this is 10 degrees, from here to here is 180, which means 180 minus 10 gives me 170. So angle 2 is 170 degrees. Well, the angles that are the same as angle 2 for a variety of reasons um, vertical angles with angle 4, corresponding angles with angle 5, alternate exterior angles for angle 8. So angles 2 equals the measure of angle 4, equals the measure of angle 5, which equals the measure of angle 8, equals to 110 degrees. And there you have all your angle measures. All right, and lastly, another problem. Okay. Again, look at the order in which your numbers are written for your angle names. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, and this one goes 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so look at where they are positioned. We have the measure of angle 1 is 4x plus 4. I'm going to write that right in there. Measure of angle 8 is x minus 9. All right, we've got parallel lines, which we knew from the beginning, so we're marking them. And we're looking at this going, whoa, that's... And angle 1 is outside on one side of the transversal. This is outside on one side of the transversal. We don't have a relationship between 1 and 8, but we do have a relationship between 8 and 6 and 1 and 3. So if angle 1 is 4x plus three, uh, 4 and it's the same as 3, I'm going to write 4x plus 4 here. If angle 8 is vertical angle with 6, which means they're equal, then that means that angle 6 is the same as angle 8, which is x minus 9. So I'm going to write that in here. And now we can use our parallel lines cut by transversal. We have interior angles in between the lines that are cut by transversal on the same side as the transversal. These guys are what we call consecutive interior angles. And we can use those rules which say they are supplementary and add up our two angles, set them equal to 180, and go from there. So we have 4x plus 4 plus x minus 9 equals 180. 
And now we combine like terms and we get 5x minus 5 equals 180. We add 5, we get 5x equals 185. We solve for x, we get x is 37. Because x is 37, we now plug in and we get 4 times 37 plus 4 equals, I'm going to do a little calculation here, 152. And then we do 37 minus 9, which is the other angle, and that's going to give us 28. I don't want to make any assumptions. I definitely want to check that out. 52 plus 28 equals 180. So we know, at least we got that part right, okay, because they are supplementary, so it's a check for us. So that means that angle 1, which equals the measure of angle 3, which equals the measure of angle 5, which equals the measure of angle 7, is going to be, okay, this was angle 1, that's 152, so that's 152 degrees. Now we also know that the measure of angle 2, which equals the measure of angle 4, which equals the measure of angle 6, which in turn equals the measure of angle 8, which is what we started with, is the 28 degrees and that's how you can write your answers okay all right and that is how you solve equations with parallel lines um, to get the angle measures that are formed by those parallel lines and transversals number one rule is that you know your lines are parallel then your conclusion is about the relationship of the angles